So I read a, um, an article recently by Paul Krugman, I can't find a link to it, um, where he was basically defending the idea of a value-added tax, which is an idea that uh, several liberals uh, have, you know, are, are against, and I, I would include myself among those. I've made at least I, at least one video I know of previously uh, where I railed against the value-added tax um, and, and consumption taxes in general. Um, you know, and Krugman's argument was basically that if you look at you know all these uh, you know big um, European liberal welfare states, you know they all have high high value added taxes, you know high levels of consumption taxes. Which you know I mean, the reason liberals tend, like tend to be uh, opposed to value added taxes is because they are highly regressive. But and his his point is that. Um, you go to a country like Denmark, for example. Um, you know they have high uh, value-added taxes, you know, but um, those value-added taxes go into you know this welfare state apparatus, and so instead of uh, having debates about top marginal tax rates like we have in America, instead they argue they argue about how to distribute that revenue. So um, you know, so it's argument about you know who gets how much of the uh, of the piece of the pie, you know, you know, um, is it how, you know, how to distribute this revenue, and you know, a lot of that revenue goes towards the people who are paying these consumption taxes, so it's really not so bad, and yeah, we ought to open ourselves up to this idea. Um, now, I, I, I still maintain my opposition to uh, the value tax, but I, I see his point. I mean. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, if if you're paying, you know, old, if you're paying like ten or twenty percent more for goods, but you're um, getting a lot more from the state in in terms of help, you know, in terms of health insurance and you know, unemployment benefits and yeah, um, whole whole list of you know, cradle to grave services like that, then you know, sure, I I could I could understand why that wouldn't be so bad. I mean. Of course, you know, for one thing, this kind of assumes that if we had a value-added tax in America, that we would become this huge welfare state, which I, I would be highly skeptical of. I think that, uh, you know, uh, knowing today's Republican Party, I think we'd just uh, use it, if anything, it would just go more towards uh, corporate welfare and make the rich even richer and the poor even poorer. Um, but I, you know, another thing is, you know, you, go, you look at these European welfare states, um, they they also have to tolerate a high level of unemployment. I mean, obviously we have a high level of unemployment now because we're in a recession. But uh, for places like like Denmark and Sweden and Norway, they uh, you know they have high levels of unemployment even in good times. So you know, and obviously it's it's not so bad to be unemployed in those countries because they have really good unemployment benefits. But um, you know that, that is a cost you have to take into account. Um, but you know, I, I guess my uh, real objection is a bit more principled than that. I um, I, th I think that when you have an alternative between when you have yeah, I, I'm I'm not a not a minarchist, you know, like like a lot of libertarians, or, or you know, certainly not an anarchist. But I I I think that when you have a uh, big government solution and a small government solution, and they both they both work pretty well. I go with a small government solution. I, I I don't believe in making government bigger than necessary. So, um, you know, my solution is uh, fix the distribution of wealth at its source. Um, you know, that means first and foremost a full tax on the unapproved value of land, as I talked about before. You know, like the Henry George idea. Um, you know, because that but that ends up uh, making land. More productive, uh, which increases employment to the point where uh, employers are competing desperately for workers, rather than workers competing desperately you know, to get jobs. Um, you know, this raising wages and raising and raising employment levels and uh, making it easy for anyone to get a job uh, and and those who have jobs to get a. Uh, yeah, to get high wages and good benefits. Um, yeah, then I've also talked before about demurrage. 
uh, idea that Sylvia Gassell talked about, uh, based the idea of giving money a negative interest rate. Uh, so it, it essentially um, deteriorate, deteriorates over time the same way that uh, our, the goods do, you know. Uh, you buy fresh fruit, it rots if you don't consume it then, so that you yeah, have money do the same thing. It loses its value if you don't spend, if you don't, uh, uh, you know, circulate through the economy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I touched on this in a couple of re previous videos. Um, I, I don't, I think I might have screwed over the savings end of it, which, um, because I didn't understand it at the time, because basically uh, it wouldn't in uh, wouldn't eliminate savings as we as we know them today. We you know you would still be able to save your money in a bank, and the bank would still owe you that money back, but they'd have to lend it out at low or no interest rates, you know, in order to um, maintain that money in the account to, to pay you back. Um, but another implication of damage that I hadn't thought about before. Uh, but uh, from reading more about it, I, I find it find this interesting. Uh, it, it would basically eliminate profit from the uh, from the system, uh, which is really interesting because, um, you know, you know, Karl Marx analyzed uh, the exchange of goods, and he says it starts out with C C, I mean commodity to commodity. You you exchange one commodity for another commodity. That's barter basically. And you have CMC, uh, which is you know, exchange a commodity for money. You use the money to buy another commodity, and that's sort of how we we're normally used to dealing with money. But for the capitalist, it's MCM prime, which is you know you exchange money for a commodity, which you use to get more money in return. So it's a kind of growth, and that yeah, you know, there's a markup goes on in that value chain, um, and that uh, and Marx thought that market came from the exploitation of labor, where Silvio Gassel points out how uh, that market actually comes from. Or, well, I guess he doesn't dispute that there's exploitation of labor, but he says that that's as a result of the power of money over commodities, which comes from it not losing its value at the same rate as commodities. So. You know, is saying that you give money a negative interest rate, and that power dynamic goes away, and then you know, uh, money and commodities are equally exchangeable, and uh, you know, the power of money is crippled, so that uh, it just it becomes purely a means of exchange, and so so that means that uh, you know the whole um, system of you know of, of having a markup. On prices goes away. Things become cheaper because they're uh, the money because the money is um, basically uh, you know because the you know, the, ca the capitalists they're, they're, they're able to borrow at zero interest and then they they sell at zero interest so that uh, prices reflect just the, the cost of the commodity and and no and no market and and basically profit disappears from that system. So I think if you had both of those reforms, I mean, you, you'd uh, reduce inequality a, a lot more than you would in, uh, you know, I, you know, you know an, an, under under a under a welfare state. So I mean, so yeah, I'm I'm saying you get rid of the welfare state if we if we can have that because you know there's there's no there's no need for it. You you know when when we have a, a system of equal exchange and of um, you know sharing the our, our common wealth from nature, you know sharing the rent, then there, there's no need for welfare state. I mean, and you know one one aspect of welfare state I've often advocated is the idea of universal health care of um, you know like single payer or something. But yeah, you know, I wonder if even that would necessarily still be necessary under um, under the system of demerage because you get profit out of the system, then maybe the private healthcare would be uh, just fine at delivering the goods. So, so yeah, I mean, even um, you know, and, and you know, the me the medical costs themselves would go down too. So, 
it may be that uh, we wouldn't even necessarily need insurance. So, um, yeah, so yeah, it, I mean, it, what was interesting to me about this proposition is that uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it socialist uh, because it's you know it's not it's not a sort of command economy, but it's but it's sort of post capitalist because you know capitalism is based on profit, and we get a post profit world. We, we essentially have a post capitalist economy. So, um, uh, I, I guess I'll end it there. Peace.